and welcome to this episode of Fairy Tales of Vienna. I'm your host, Samantha B. And in this chapter, chapter six, I want to let you know how the moving process went for me. It happened yesterday, thanks for asking. And it was super easy. The only reason it was super easy is because I made a friend here who has already moved uh, two or three times in Vienna. And um, based on another friend's recommendation, I decided to just pack up my stuff, bring a friend to help me schlep it, and yes, take an Uber, because that's way easier than taking multiple pieces of luggage on a tram, down into the metro, on a bus. For those of you who are brave and strong enough to have survived doing that, and multiple times, kudos to you. I'm not that person. I'm the person who likes to learn from others, trials and tribulations. So thank you for that. Um, Getting here was super easy. It took under 10 minutes. And now I'm in this beautiful, awesome, happening neighborhood. Uh, But I'm located in the back of the building, so I can't hear anything. And it is delightful. Um, Everything was empty. This is a place that uh, is meant to be rented out for however long you want it to be rented out. And so all I had to do was unzip my rolly luggage and put it away in drawers and such. Amazing. Super easy. Um, The agency that I worked with for this was Anywhere Housing. Now I'm not getting paid anything for giving them a shout out. And I've only been here. This is my second day. So... Uh, So far, so good. I haven't been kidnapped. Nobody else has claimed to be living in this apartment. I haven't been taken out by the police, which is a a good good day. It's a good day. Um, And now that I have this residence, I'm able to figure out um, how to, to fill out this important paperwork in Vienna, Austria. There are lots and lots of forms you have to fill out for when you move into a new place. When you leave an old place um, for being here to begin with, for how long, uh, for wanting to say hello to someone, there's a 15-page form. Maybe I made one of those up. Maybe I didn't. Maybe you don't know me well enough. Keep watching these. You'll catch up. But the Meld, Meldazettel, which is probably not how you say that, It's a form you need to fill out that states your new address. Um, You're supposed to fill it out three days after you are get it in with an appointment um, by the third day that you are in Vienna, Austria. Because of the pandemic, they are pushed back months and months and weeks and weeks. So I um, have already been here for three weeks and um, my, the earliest appointment I can get with those, uh, this, special office um, isn't until like November 9th, I think. So it's out of my hands, out of my control. I think they're more lax now just because they're struggling to keep up with all of this stuff with the pandemic. Um, And so I'm not worried about it. We'll see if the next episode is uh, me live streaming as I get pulled into the um, paddy wagon, the police wagon. Uh, then we'll have a different uh, different answer to this situation. But um, the way I did this specifically was super easy, using uh, the old internet machine and a computer and checking every day until I found an apartment that I thought could work for me. It's very close to campus. Uh, it's also in a hip happening neighborhood um, that's still super clean and fairly empty, which is nice, but there's you know, lots of grocery stores and cafes and gelato places. You know what I'm talking about. It's also some cool toy stores, bookstores, uh, all my favorite types of stores. There's also really cute parks um, and lots of transportation for me to easily whip around this uh, hip new city. So, so far, so good. Um, I because I'm like a little nervous about getting my residence permit that I haven't heard back from yet. <laughs> Remember they are months and months backed up. I um, only have 
registered or you know, reserved this place for a few months. I'm able to extend as long as I want. I just wasn't sure if I could get kicked out of the country or not. And if I do, um, my friends in the UK get ready for me couch surfing as I take my classes online and uh, try to figure out how to smuggle myself back into this country. <laughs> you think I joke and I do sometimes, but not, not this time. Um, yeah, so we'll see. But I love it. It's awesome. I figured out how to use all of the appliances. I have a washing machine, so I just did lots and lots of laundry, which is like sadly one of my favorite things to do when I'm hanging out at home. Um, and you know, I don't have enough room for any big parties, which I guess is smart because so many people try to crash my house and like have parties all the time. So you guys are definitely SOL. Find other people, find people that like to stay up past 7 PM. Um, good luck with that. And exploring my new neighborhood has been amazing. There's just really awesome, sweet cafe right across the way. And they have uh, out, outside seating and, and um, heat lamps. And the waiter's a doll and he, wow, he made us laugh so much. He was great with um, understanding my English because his English was better than, than mine, even though he's from here. So it worked out. He started uh, miming things just to, just to get a chuckle out of us and it worked. Um, sad fact for him, I live across the street, so I will be going there every day. Uh, as he is my um, second friend here, so he won't return my call, so which is kind of strange, but whatever. Today was Sunday, so you could not do anything major, grocery shopping or any kind of shopping, but I took the tram, which picks me up right outside of my place, and made my way to the uh, river to check out um, a really good burger place, because that was open, so that was great. And I get, it's like a really popular shopping area. Um, and it did actually have some stores open. Uh, but the, the, you know, all of the buildings are just so beautiful. And there are a lot of teeny tiny, um, like hallway situations, but it's cobblestone. And there's like really fun window displays and like really beautiful lamps that like light your way. And I didn't get lost. Um, I didn't make it into a magical world, unfortunately. And, um, I had a great time. I had great food. Uh, I was with one of my friends. We walked around. We checked out some things. There were tons and tons of people out because it's, you know, it's one of those warm days uh, that we're not going to get a lot more of um, in this season. So everybody was out. There were families of like 18 to 400 people all walking around with ice cream in those poor ice cream stores to see a family of like 30 roll up. Bless up, you guys. That must have been... I hope they tipped you really well. Tipping's an interesting thing here. Um, I know that's not what this is supposed to be about, but as I've been hanging out mostly with people who are not from here, in fact, all of the people I've been hanging out with are internationals from, you know, different places, hence the name. And um, it's inter interesting to see who tips what. I like to tip kind of like the way I do back home. Not as much, I guess, because people get paid a little bit better, but I still... I would feel really bad, like not tipping well. Um, and depending on what country people are from, some people try not to tip at all, which I think is awful. And some people just always add like a euro, no matter what the bill is. And you're like, okay, it's uncomfortable because you're splitting the bill usually, or you, you get separate bills, but you're with these people. Um, and when they don't tip or anything, you're like, oh, please, please, God, don't remember me for the next time I come here. I promise not to bring that person. Um, I realize that it's different that in the United States. Uh, if you're working as wait staff, you make no money. You hope to make enough tips to pay one of your bills. And basically you're poor and treated horribly. But apparently across Europe, in most places, you make a living wage just just going to work and doing your job and then like tips are extra but still you're dealing with people and you're bringing them food and you're doing things that are like awful i still think you deserve a tip um it's ridiculous and all of the jobs here come with health benefits it's not even a question or a thought so think on that my friends 
feel free to move over here now. Um, I have a new place, but you're welcome to sleep in the stairwell. Uh, or there's a little courtyard. If you bring your own boxes, um, I'm going to not know you if uh, you get caught, but you're welcome to do that. Um, I'm going to end it here because I'm very busy and popular and I have to do a FaceTime with people that are in a, a situation where they're nine hours uh, behind me, which who isn't these days? Well, thanks for listening to this super exciting episode of Fairy Tales of Vienna with your host, Samantha B. Don't forget to try the imaginary products from my imaginary friend, Prince Charming, who has been working his tush off. And by that, I mean making his servants work really hard to come up with really great products that make him look great. Until next time, listeners, watchers, creeps following me. 